Well, hello. Today I'd like to do a demonstration for you on how to create a simple bowl, such as a cereal bowl. So I'm beginning with a piece of clay, as we always do, and this again is a piece of pugged Dover White. I have it firmly stuck on the bat, and as we do with anything, we're going to do a little coning and centering to start with. With coning and centering, always a reminder, your left palm comes in at about 7 o'clock to contact the clay. Your right finger tips come in at about 1 o'clock to contact the clay. Your right thumb is down here at your wrist, and you're basically just making a clamp. And as you squeeze inward with even pressure and move upward, you will be creating a cone shape on the surface of your clay. You can cone a couple of times, create a bit of a cone shape. It doesn't have to be tall and skinny. It's just a matter of a cone shape. Then we're ready to center, pushing that back down. Notice my forearm is braced securely. I have my elbow tucked in, and I'm pushing down slowly. And here my thumb and my index finger of my left hand are doing the bulk of the work. I put a little water on there periodically as I need some lubrication. If the clay gets too dry, then the clay is just going to fall apart in your hands. So with this, I've got that relatively centered there. So I have that in a workable position. I've cleaned that up. Now, as I work with a bowl, cereal bowl size for instance, what I like to think about with a piece of clay is I like to think of something that's going to be shorter and wider. If I were making a cylinder, something like, let's say, a flower vase or a mug that I might drink out of, I would make that piece of clay a little smaller and taller. So, being that we're making a bowl, I've compressed this clay downward a little bit more, so it's a little shorter and wider. So, I want to think about that, especially as I need a little wider foot for the base of my bowl, so I can even push that down, center that downward a little bit farther yet, and make that base a little bit wider yet. So there we are. And we're now working with a centered piece of clay. So my next step, as I always like to do and I encourage you to do, take your needle tool. I slowed down my wheel to about a medium speed. Coning and centering, as always, is done at full speed. Uh, beyond that, we use medium speed, slow to medium. You'll have to find your, the speed that works best for you. I like to, just by good practice, I like to take a needle tool and make a little target on there. Remember, if you want, you can make a series of lines in the clay and actually make it look like a bullseye. The more you want to go, that's all okay because you're going to cover all that up. So we really don't need all of that. That's just confusion. So there we are. That's the target that I'm going to work off of. Now, I've already set my speed, so now I need to begin the process of holing out the clay. I need some water for lubrication. My wheel speed is slow to medium. I'm going to bring in my right hand here at about 5 o'clock. And with a little cradle here of my thumb, and my palm. I'm going to bring my ring finger and my middle finger of my left hand right through the cradle and placed on that center of that target. And when they're stationary, I'm going to slowly push them downward. I do not want them wobbling, moving back and forth, as then I risk being off center when I hold this out. And that would be problematic. So here I simply want to push downward, slowly and evenly so that I can create the opening, the hole in my bowl. As I do so, I get to a depth where by experience, I know about how thick that is. I'm going to mop up the water. I'm going to stop the wheel, because this is good practice, take my needle tool, stick it in the middle, grab my needle tool, and there I have an ideal thickness. It's a little bit less than a half of an inch, so we're okay. We don't want to go too thin. The handle on the needle tool in this case, this is about 3 eighths of an inch. That's okay. A little bit more like that of a fingernail. That's about a half an inch. 
that's okay as well. You don't want to go too thick, you don't want to go too thin. Too thick just makes it heavy and you've not made use of your clay. Too thin just makes it fragile and delicate and you're apt to have a broken pot when you're done. So, I've reset my speed to slow to medium. Now I'm going to go back with my, for my opening process. I've put some water back on for lubrication. And now I'm moving my fingers, that ring finger and middle finger again on my left hand. I'm sweeping them outward towards my right hand. My right hand needs to remain stationary at this point. Try not to get in the habit of moving your hand away or you're going, to cut, you're going to find yourself with some problems. So here I'm just going to move my fingers outward to the outer edge of my clay and I'm going to go back with my middle finger and I'm going to gently compress the bottom of that bowl what's going to become a bowl. Gently compress that a little bit, even that out. And now I've set my opening. I'm going to straighten out my wall a little bit here so you can better see what it is we're going to do when we pull this. I've just done this by making a C and compressing that rim downward. So now you can see how the outer wall is more uniform. So, as we do with anything, when we're going to start to pull, the pulling action is done here from the outside, primarily with the right hand. My point of contact is going to be here at about 4 o'clock. I'm going to use my ring finger, my middle finger of my right hand. I'm going to make a groove, and the clay that's above my fingers is what I'm going to lift upwards. The other part of the process for pulling is to use a thumb and middle finger of my left hand in the form of a C. And naturally, because of the thickness of the base and my finger position, my thumb and middle finger of my left hand are going to be higher than my right hand. My right hand is going to do all the work. I stay braced against my body with my elbows, and I move slowly and steadily upward from the bottom to the top. As I get to the rim, I lift right off, and then I can come back here and make a C, with my left hand, with my index finger of my right hand, and gently compress that rim. I'm going to go ahead and make one more pull, make a groove, slowly pull upwards. I do this much by experience, but a good tip, a good thing to practice is just counting silently to yourself as you pull upwards so you can maintain the same pace or rhythm or cadence depending upon your activity. If you're a cyclist, you would refer to it as cadence. If you're a musician, you would refer to it as rhythm. And if you are a runner, you would refer to it as pace. we we'll make yet one more pull. A reminder that the pulling process is, is pulling the clay from the outside, not the inside. You recall that when I opened it, I set the inside diameter for my pot, and I'm still maintaining that inside diameter because I'm pulling the clay solely from the outside. Now, with a bowl form, a little bit contrary to what we've done with cylinders. So with a bowl form, you notice that my wall is slightly outward. The rim of the pot is slightly more open than it would be if I were making a cylindrical shape. By making a cylinder, I want to pull up and slightly inward. It helps me maintain that shape and the consistency of the clay much better. Because I'm making a bowl, and I know it's going to become an open form, it's okay to pull slightly outward. Now you don't want to get crazy and pull out on that extreme angle of where your bowl is going to become. You want to be able to stretch the clay and open it to that with the tool or with your fingers. I prefer using a tool uh, because it, it's a rigid uh, instrument and it doesn't move around like my fingers do. So, 
I just completed my last pull, so I'm going to go ahead and soften up that rim and compress it, clean up the little loose stuff there. Now I can see with my outside shape, that's pretty nice. My inside shape is pretty good as well. I'm going to take, because I'm making this into a bowl, and I'm going to use a potter's rib to do that, I'm going to take and go ahead, this is one of the steps that I do with all of my pots that I make at the wheel, is I trim out or clean up the base edge of my pots. This provides me with an ever so subtle foot ring should I not have the opportunity to actually trim the clay, trim the pot later on. So by doing this just subtly, very gently, I'm able to clean up the outer surface of my pot and get rid of that loose clay. Come back and touch that up one more time. It's really important to make sure that you're holding firmly the tool. You don't want to just kind of hold it in two fingers and just kind of let it go because you risk the clay grabbing a hold of the tool and you're going to gouge something, you're going to do something you didn't want to do. So I've cleaned up that outside shape. I've got my rim relatively nicely compressed there. And I'm going to look at my inside shape. And now I'm ready to take, I'm going to use a different rib. I'm going to use this flexible, uh, somewhat flexible green rib. It has a very nice curved edge to it. The company that makes these particular ribs, they make them in four different colors. Each color is reflective of a different um, rigidity or flexibility, whichever you prefer. Uh, I'm more comfortable with the flexibility that the green rib offers, so this is the one that I buy. Um, they have red, blue, yellow, and green. Uh, the green one is the one that I prefer. You might find some more suitable for your throwing style. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some water back on here for lubrication. And using my rib, I'm going to start with that rib here at the rim, and I'm going to move slowly downward. And this is providing the shape of my bowl. I like to think about a bowl where the bottom of the rib meets the bottom of the bowl on the inside so that I have a nice curvature, a nice smooth flow through the inside of my bowl. So I don't want to have a, a, a big edge down there at the bottom. So with this nice curvature, if we were to compare the ribs, if you looked at the standard potter's rib, it too has a nice curvature. If I were using this potter's rib, I would keep the point up and this curved side going down so that this is where it would connect with the bottom of the bowl on the inside. With this particular one, it has a round, more rounded surface and yet again I can still use that and I can get a nice smooth transition from the bottom of the wall into the bottom of the bowl. And just by moving back and forth a little bit on the wall of my bowl, I can clean up that surface a little bit, get rid of some excess clay, and finish the shape of my bowl. I do like to come back, and before I say that I am done with a bowl, I do like to come back and compress that rim. That's really important for me, and I want you to think about that yourself, as when you put a bowl on a shelf and you put it in the cupboard, the first point of contact for a bowl is going to be the rim. You don't want your rim thin and fragile because that's what's going to then cause it to break very easily. If the rim is, is, comp is not compressed, that makes it even more fragile. So I like to think of a rim as, as compressing it to make it stronger and having it a little bit thicker to make it more durable. And my bowls will last a little bit longer as well. So I've created a nice bowl form here. This will work very nicely for cereal or soup or ice cream, uh, or as my son would, would eat out of it, SpaghettiOs or raviolis. Um, so a very versatile, very functional bowl. So as I stop my wheel, I'll take a look at the shape of that bowl. And that works very nicely for me. You can see how the, the shape flows as you look at the silhouette of that. You can see that has a nice curvature to it. And later on, as the bowl separates from the bat, I'll be able to clean up the outside edge a little bit and trim a foot ring on the very bottom. So, uh, that from about a pound and a half worth of clay is just a nice cereal bowl. Uh, so, thanks for watching.
We'll see you in the next video.